This video is sponsored by ACES. Frankly, let me tell you, I am not 100% sure about what I'm doing. All I know is that whatever's in this box weighs a freaking ton. And to be honest, this one too. Today is Thursday, August 24th. It probably wouldn't be a bad thing if I would start reading labels. Look, to be frank, the goal today is to set this whole freaking thing up. You know what, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna unbox all of these freaking pieces of metal. I am going to be putting them in the car and then I'm going to be building this a Jans. Oh, I think it's the footrest. Nice, so the simulator is gonna be going here. Everything's looking perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You good? Yeah, I'm good. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the seat. There's a lot of freaking pieces to this simulator, so we're gonna start getting on that. See how it looks. It took us two hours to build the simulator, just the frame. Now we have a bunch of freaking boxes to unbox to get the steering wheel, the pedals, the, the everything. And then we're gonna put the ASUS monitor up. And I think that's about it, probably the PC, but it's looking pretty freaking cool. Okay, so Mozza Racing was super nice with us and simply sent us some stuff and I'm talking about the good stuff. We got their shifting unit built pretty much in aluminum. Actually, it's a CNC unit machined from anodized aviation grade aluminum. They also sent the stand that comes with it. This is just simply to mount it to the simulator. We got their FSR Formula 1 steering wheel. Really, I think this is honestly just a simple thing of beauty. We got a proper wheelbase for it and I'm talking about a wheelbase with 60 newton meters of torque to really give the simulator that sensation of being in a racing car. Matza makes it really easy to connect all of it through this hub. It's a simple hub, honestly, there's just not much to it. This can also connect their handbrake, very similar materials compared to their shifting unit, by the way, and of course, their pedals. I got proper pedals, and when I say proper, I mean I got them with a clutch that actually feels like a clutch. Really, like of the whole set, just in case I like to play Forza as well, which is why it was the, the perfect excuse to have them send their regular steering wheel. Yo, I can't begin to explain how insane this stuff is. Like, holy, look at that. That looks like a real one. Shifting knob is absolutely insane. The material on it is crazy. The same thing for the handbrake. I mean, the whole thing is just pretty freaking crazy. Including the steering wheel, this is this is crazy. I am so excited to get this over with. I guess the next thing for us is to literally just build the monitor stand and then put the ASUS monitor on, and then we can start rigging it. Yeah. All right. This feels like a car. That's pretty cool. The whole frame is done. Now we just gotta put everything on it. This is good. I think we gotta lower this a bit more. Then that's it. Install the shifter, install the handbrake, put the monitor in. Ah, this is gonna be sick. It's a jog! You thought you are getting cinematic, papi? No, no, you're not getting cinematic right now. No, but honestly, um, I'm really excited to unbox this ASUS monitor. Put everything together, start touching, feeling, that's what I want. 49 inch of ultra wide in my face for gaming. Oh, that's what I wanna see right now. Yeah, it would legit be something like this, but with a monitor on. Let's get to building. Okay, so we chose to go with probably the most ultra wide monitor I've ever seen. I mean, people, I'm trying to build a racing simulator here and the ROG Strix XT49 WCR is one of those displays that delivers the most screen real estate horizontally. So I was honestly 
really excited to unbox this this here does come with its own stand in metal actually the arm however is a bit of a mix of plastic and metal it's of course the go-to if you don't want to mount this to a table and both together i will say it, it does look good actually it's also pretty easy to assemble so i did that just to show that to you i also unboxed their back cover because i found it interesting how they tried to hide the back vesa portion of the monitor Talking about VESA, the monitor also comes with VESA standoffs and like always, a nice pouch that includes all the cables you need. I'm talking about an upstream cable, a power cable with a massive power brick, an HDMI 2.1 cable, display port, and surprisingly USB-C. Yeah, USB-C on this massive 49 inch ultra wide monitor. But what I was most surprised about was the fact that this looked a lot bigger than I expected. I did install the VESA standoffs, installed some screws for the monitor stand, all of this to be able to mount it to the racing simulator. Honestly, this is the best looking monitor I've gotten this year. It has all the features you'd want as a gamer and more. It's sleek, it's not as heavy as I thought it would be, the side profile looks good, and the curvature is just right for gaming and productivity. Very well done, Asus. Holy. Yo, you guys have no idea how insane this looks in real life, especially the ultra wide monitor it's insane now we're gonna get to uh building bueno, sí. Everything goes smooth until you run into some hiccups. Like right now, the shifting gear and like the e-brake is not really aligning with the seat and the positioning. So now I'm trying to think, how do I mount all of this stuff? It was all going smooth until now. So what I'm gonna do is that we're gonna spend some time trying to figure this out, put it all together, cable manage it, and then I'm gonna give you guys a really freaking cool cinematic. But for now, I am figuring these things out. I literally just came back from Jan's house. I couldn't stop myself from going there. I forgot the camera here, so I couldn't grab like a genuine reaction of like me seeing the simulator for the first time. And I say that because I had Jan sort of finishing up the rig as I was away in Italy. And it looks, um, I don't know, I didn't imagine it that way. It looks even better than I was expecting. And I literally just drove like the car, the F1 car, it's insane. My hands literally hurt. The feedback is incredible. The ultra wide monitor just looks stunning. It's insane. So I think what I should do is probably bring you guys with me. Welcome to our Formula One and Rally simulator setup. Holy, has this been a journey? I actually had this whole frame stored in my parents' garage for the past two years. I've been waiting, been trying to find the right time and the right products to do this. It's finally here, looking way better than what I had imagined. I think the biggest challenge for me was finding the right monitor and PC to set this whole thing up. I wanted some things to be very specific, a really wide monitor without too, too much curve, something simple and with great IOs. I wanted to also avoid building a whole custom rig 
and I tried my best to find something very small to power this up. I think the only thing missing here would be the proper attachment to rig the XG49WCR to the frame itself. It would sort of make the whole thing really modular. I mean, this has caster wheels, so it does make it easy to transport around a room, but for now, this monitor stand will do. For the visuals, like I said, I wanted something wide, and I think 49 inches is the perfect screen real estate for a simulator, especially when it comes to driving an F1 car. I mean, you can literally feel like you're in the car, and it's so easy to see everything. The fact that this here is a gaming monitor, of course, makes the whole experience feel even more immersive, and I'm talking about having a display that delivers 165 hertz when overclocked and extreme low motion blur sync technology. In short, ELMB sync enables fast strobing of the LED backlit panel alongside with NVIDIA G-Sync to eliminate ghosting and tearing at high frame rates. So when racing in pretty much any game, it'll do its best to really deliver the sharpest gaming visuals possible. I will say it's something that's a lot more noticeable in FPS games and works better when running above 85 hertz, but it can affect picture quality, especially clarity, so keep that in mind. Overall, as a whole, it'll feel like the movements are very exact. I think it's preference. I personally find that running adaptive free sync by itself makes the movements feel a bit more smooth. Anyways, I like having these settings just like I enjoy having different overdry level modes. That too will prevent ghosting or motion blur in fast moving images. I think these features work well, it's just about finding what works for you, especially on a panel like this with a 32 by 9 aspect ratio and a resolution of 5120 by 1440. This is basically like having two 27 inch monitors side by side without a bezel. I think for racing it's the sweet spot, it can be the same for productivity work, I mean I did set this up to work with KVM, our peripherals are pretty much connected to it, so in case you want to connect, I don't know, a MacBook through USB-C, you'll be able to control both computers with a single set of peripherals. As a whole, there's that, that works through USB-C, but there's also the ability to supply up to 90 watts of power to your notebook. Alongside USB-C, you've got an HDMI 2.0, I would have loved to see 2.1 by the way. There's also DisplayPort 1.4, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports with USB-B, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and an RJ45. I'm actually not familiar with monitors having RJ45 inputs, but with this, you can run a wired internet connection through your monitor, you know, in case your MacBook doesn't have a LAN port. Look, I'm super happy I finally found the right monitor for this rig. It's so nice, it's ergonomic, it has great minimal bezels, the chin is not massive, HDR400 works as expected, the specs are great. HDR400, by the way, is one of those things I recommend you try by yourself and use it as you wish. You'll gain in color and you'll get brighter highlights, but you'll lose in blacks and gain nothing in contrast. That's basically my experience with HDR400 monitors. Anyways, the OSD will allow you to further play with image quality, especially when it comes to different types of gaming visuals, the shadow boost, game plus to enable different gaming features, and so on. Solid monitor and it pairs extremely well with the G22. This is by far, to my knowledge, the best condensed pre-built there is. If I'm wrong, do let me know down below, but essentially this thing is the size of a console. It's a 10 liter form factor PC with an RTX 4070, an i9-13900KF, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. I think that by itself should explain why I chose to have it on the rig. It's not easy to build something very powerful this small. I really wanted to avoid the headache of going custom build, and this was it. It has all of the IOs you'll need and runs pretty much anything you throw at it. To complement it, I went with wireless peripherals. Their dongles are actually connected to the monitor to run them through KVM, but essentially these here are the ROG Strix Scope 296 wireless keyboard and the Asus Harp mouse. It's a great duo, honestly probably one of my favorite duos along the MX Master 3S and the MX Mechanical. The board itself is a full-sized keyboard with a dedicated numpad and a compact form factor and the mouse is probably one of the lightest wireless gaming mouse there is to date. The duo, if they were to be used on a gaming setup, really allows you to free up some space, especially when it comes to using the mouse. The keyboard itself, from top to bottom, is very well built. I mean, we're talking about layers upon layers to get this thing to what it is. An aluminum alloy top plate paired with a bottom hard plastic cover that sandwiches the dampening foam with a silicon foam to help out with key irregularities. Honestly, for a full-fledged multifunctional keyboard with tons of features, it's very much worth checking out. Look at this, look at how well this thing is all 
put together huge shout out to jan it really turned out way better than what i was expecting let me just give you guys a quick tour of what he did the seating 75 percent of what you see comes as it is this is one of next level racing's premium cockpits the seat is super super comfortable the materials feel nice i love the touches it has especially with the whole harness idea i will say the seat setup might not age the best as this fake leather is sort of falling apart already although the rest is solid and as long as you screw things properly the rig stays planted on its caster wheels you just gotta lock them and then from time to time because the wheelbase is so strong Strong, the base where it attaches to needs to be retightened. The same thing goes for the bases that hold the shifter and the e-brake. Um, yeah, this is actually a really good hack. Jan finally figured this out and ordered an extra pack of these off Amazon. He created a stair setup in order to have the e-brake sitting in the lower step and the gear shifter in the higher step. Sitting in it and playing with it really gives me that feeling of definitely being in a rally car. Hack number two a vivo adjustable clamp to mount the pc he mounted this clamp desk leg to the arm of the monitor stand insanely well put together if you guys are looking to mount a super small rig to your simulator this is a really nice way of doing it you can get really creative with this setup and even go as far as attaching power bars to it use frames to route cables and so on and the final hack that was added to this racing simulator frame was a mounted tray Apparently, we had a Vivo pole laying around the office, so Jan clamped it up to the railing of the base pack on the other side and attached a Vivo Steel Universal Full Motion pole mount. All of this, along with the stock frame of the seat, created these weird crevices that he used to route cables. If you want to route anything within your setup, guys, I left a link in the description down below of a kit that does wonders. Jan used their ties, their cable sleeves, cable straps, cable holders, he used as much as he could from the kit to be able to route as many cables as he could. You can only imagine how many cables the Mozza base, the pedals, the e-brake and the shifting unit yields. Yeah, quite a lot, but the hub though makes it super easy to integrate everything together. As soon as you plug it all into the PC and download the Mozza software, everything gets recognized. But there are some quirks with the titles we've been playing. F1 2022, for example, has its own little small set of bugs. I know the Mozza team works hand in hand with their developers team to try to patch things up. I'd say 95% of things work as they should, and the small stuff that doesn't are very niche things like specific keybinds. Look, people have their own workarounds within their subreddit to make sure all of it works as it should. The other thing is that getting Forza Horizon 5 working with any wheel and pedals is a pain. You need to use a couple of third-party pieces of software to get it working, and even at that, on our end, we never ended up getting Forza to properly work, which sucks. So if you're not using Thrustmaster, Fanatec, or Logitech equipment, Forza is a real pain to deal with. You don't truly get the full experience, but when you are able to, on a set of Corsa or F1, it's so good, like insanely impressive. The pedals feel insanely precise, the way the clutch goes in, the way the spring of the brake feels when braking, the accelerator, it's all so good. Shifting with this unit also gives me the sensation that I'm shifting in a gated Ferrari. It's super solid and the e-brake setup complements it so well. The buttons on all of the steering wheels are incredibly well put together. This includes the paddle shifters, the joysticks, rotating encoders, and so on. I mean, even taking it off and putting it back on feels extremely satisfying. It's a very well done setup, but again, it has its quirks. That being said, there's a lot you can do within their software to make a lot of the things right. It has all sorts of tweaks when it comes to the way the whole setup behaves. It's very advanced and it's something I do need to spend a lot of time with. Um, I sort of got carried away last night uh, playing with the whole simulator. Mm, I'm really happy though with the way it turned out. Sadly for me, this is not going to be living in the office. We have pretty much outgrown the office, so I'm going to leave this at Jan's. I won't be able to show you this as often as I wish I could. If you want to replicate it, I will leave all the links down below. Make sure to check out Asus and the products that allow us to finally make this happen. This is it for me. I'm actually excited to play Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown when it comes out. Until then, I said of course I will do. Hope you guys liked the video. I will see you guys next week. We'll go over the S23 Ultra after six months of owning it. Take care, guys. Peace.